welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church of Prescott Valley, Arizona on this Baptism of Our Lord Sunday. It's the first Sunday of the uh, new year for us as far as out being done with Christmas. Uh, this is the season of Epiphany uh, as we uh, recognize that Jesus is the light that came into the world. Um, this might be a good time for you to uh, pause the video and go to our website at emmanuellutheranpv.org to download our order of worship so that you can follow along with the words of the hymns as well as uh, the liturgies. Uh, but also a, a time I invite you to possibly go and grab a bowl of water or a small cup of water or some kind of water because we're going to recognize our own baptism today. So uh, if you pause the video and go and grab yourself a little portion of water because I'm going to invite you to remember your baptism as well. As you know, we record these uh, services in advance. In fact, this is Thursday morning and I would like to talk to you a bit about the uh, events that have happened in Washington, D.C. yesterday. Uh, I kind of come to know in the last years that words from leaders matter. In fact, certainly the words that our president said to the group of protesters that he saw at, um, in Washington, D.C., where he encouraged them to march on the Capitol building made a difference and uh, incited uh, activities we never thought we would see in our nation's capital. Um, I know that there's lots of go things going on in our country right now. The 132,000 people hospitalized uh, with COVID-19 may not have had that chance to watch what was going on on the TV. They may not have thought about it or worried about it because they had their own battles to fight and certainly the doctors and nurses and caregivers and first responders and the families of those who were hospitalized had their attentions divided. But words do matter. And so, although I am pastor of a church in northern Arizona, it's not very big, yet I am a leader. And so my words can make a difference. And so I share with you today a few things. First of all, for me, the biggest shock of yesterday was to realize I didn't recognize my country yesterday or those people that were storming the Capitol building and breaking in. And, um, but I knew that I saw flags of all different kinds, but the most shocking one was there was a Christian flag that marched into that building uh, uninvited. And yet we know that our God gives us much direction and tells us what to do. And I think that's the most important thing that although I didn't recognize my country yesterday, I know who I am because of what we're celebrating today, the baptism of our Lord. In our baptism, we are claimed as children of God. And so we know who we are and whose we are. And we are directed by God for just a few things to love God with our, all our heart and mind and soul and our neighbor as ourselves. And a lot of times we don't agree with each other, but we have learned that we can get along with each other if we keep our focus on the one that is most important and listening to God's directives and dictates. Christ was political. He was born into a time of great political unrest. The whole country was moving to their hometowns to be counted in a census that had not happened in many, many years. Can you imagine us being asked to uproot ourselves and go to our hometown or our parents' hometown to be counted? That would be very unsettling. I'm sure a lot of people were grumbling about that. And then we have John the Baptist who ultimately sacrificed his life because of political issues. We have a, a ruler's daughter who asks for his head, and that happened. So we know that we cannot avoid politics, it's just part of our lives. But we do know that we have direction from God because we are the children of God. And each one of us, every one of us, are God's beloved creatures. And so I invite you today 
to hear the words of this prayer that's from All Creation Sings, a new liturgy that's come out of the ELCA, a prayer for a time of civic distress. And it was posted yesterday by the ELCA and I put it on my Facebook page and I'd like to pray it with you today. Rise up and come to our help, merciful Lord, for we are in need. Our spirits are weighed down with fear. Our bodies feel as fragile as the dust from which we came. All that we have trusted seems hidden from sight. Although this moment has come upon our nation, you have not forgotten us. We do not trust in our own power or strength, but in your steadfast love in every generation. Show us your face in this time of trial. Remind us of your faithfulness and save us for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundance, great, abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. Friends, how vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we're proclaimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we're called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, Baptized in Water. Thank you.
join me in the prayer of the day. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now it's time for the children's time to shine. And you guys may notice that I have something a little unusual here on my little table. It's a bowl of water. Because today we're celebrating the baptism of Jesus. Jesus went to the Jordan River and found his cousin John there. He was baptizing people. And Jesus came to him and said, you need to baptize me. And John's like, oh my gosh, no. You are the son of God. Why? How can I do that? And Jesus said, it's because it's the right thing to do. And so John baptized Jesus in that river. And so we have an opportunity every once in a while to remember our baptism. And so today I have a little bowl of water, but you know what? Every day you do something that could remind you of your baptism. I bet you just about every morning and maybe even every evening, you wash your face and you wash your hands. Martin Luther used to say that when he got up in the morning and washed his face, he would remind himself that he was baptized. Because when we're baptized, you know, we put that little cross on our foreheads and we pour a little water on us. It's kind of like washing our face. So I invite you to remember your baptism at that time when you're claimed as God's kid and part of God's family that you can remind yourself every day when you wash your face or when you play in the bath or you take a shower that you are in fact a baptized child of God and that God loves you very much. So let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day to remember our baptism. Help us always when we see water to remember you have claimed us as your kids and part of your big family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our reading, first reading, comes to us from the book of Genesis, the first chapter. In fact, the first through fifth verse. Out of chaos, God brings order. Out of the formless void, God brings light. This familiar story was good news for the Israelites who experienced much, much chaos in their history. It remains good news for us. God created and continues to create new life. In the beginning was with God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light and there was light. And God saw that the light was good and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Our gospel reading today comes to us from the first chapter of Mark, beginning with the fourth verse. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel hair and a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So let us pray. Dear Mother, Father, Creator of the earth, be present as we proclaim your word. Open our ears and hearts that we might learn more about you and your will for us. Be with us as we share in the baptism of Jesus, your Son, the true gift of Christmas, in whom we pray. Amen. Remember, just a few weeks ago, we talked about Jesus being eight days old. And today, he's all grown up. He's 30. I guess that is all part of that business about God not being bound by linear time. In the Bible, only two books give us the story of Christmas. We think it's very special and an important event, but at least six books talk about the baptism of Jesus. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and Romans. As far as the scriptures are concerned, it seems that Jesus' baptism is more an important event than even his birth. Maybe this should be a sign to us as well. Maybe we ought to be celebrating the anniversary of our baptisms just as exuberantly as we do our birthdays and wedding anniversaries. It's always great to have another occasion to celebrate. My son Andy was baptized on Christmas Eve at a children's service in San Francisco. It is an event that no one in my family forgets. Ben was baptized on April 27th and frequently we have celebrated this day by reminding him, making sure that he's living wet with squirt guns or water balloons. <laughs> Tim and I are godparents to the children of some of my seminary friends. I send them little gifts on their baptism anniversaries, usually something to do with water, like bath toys. When we're learning about baptism and confirmation class, I always invite the students to talk about their baptism stories with their families since many of them were baptized as infants and don't have any memories of it. I remember my baptism. I was baptized with my sister in the spring after she was born. I was four years old. I remember standing in front of the congregation and the pastor getting my hair all wet. An hour or so later, I can remember sitting at the lunch table eating chicken noodle soup and touching my forehead. It was still wet. I remember thinking that when God gets you wet, you really stay wet. It seemed very much like magic to me at the time. Today we find Jesus seeking out his cousin John the Baptist. Remember these guys probably grew up together, knew each other well. In the Hebrew tradition, many holidays were family holidays like our Thanksgiving and Christmas celebrations. On some of Mary and Elizabeth's extended family visits, the boys might have been found playing with Joseph's scrap wood in the workshop, or fishing in the river, or running through the olive grove, whatever kids did for play in those days. So John knew Jesus as a family member, 
knew if he hated vegetables, knew if he snored or not, and maybe even knew the treasures hidden in a little pouch that every little boy keeps hidden away. Now we're at the river where John sees Jesus coming for baptism and suddenly he's not cousin Yahshua anymore. How does John know him as the Lamb of God who comes to take away the sin of the world? Usually it's hard for family members to recognize and accept prophets or positions of authority in other family members. You know that thing about prophets not being honored in their hometowns. So it was unusual with unusual humility and grace that John was able to see, recognize, and proclaim his cousin as the Lamb of God. Think of how John must have felt. Here is the one he had proclaimed as coming, the one mightier than himself, whose sandals he was unworthy to tie, and it turns out to be his cousin, Yahshua. How humble John must have felt. How unqualified, unworthy to be asked to perform this rite for the Lamb of God. We usually think of this story as something that John did for Jesus, but I think it might also have been seen as something that Jesus did for John. That Jesus' request validated John's mission, his vocation, his ministry. Jesus is saying, yes, John, you are the one who is preparing the way. Did John see the voice, see or hear the voice, or see the spirit? In this version of the story, it doesn't include John as a hearer, but others do. Whatever the case may be, he knew at that moment that something special was happening and that he played a part in whatever God was doing. And the same promises that lift us up also gave John strength in those dangerous waters of his ministry. In Mark's version of the baptism story, it says that only Jesus sees the Holy Spirit descending and only Jesus hears the words that God speaks. His baptism is an assurance that first, he was indeed God's son. And secondly, although he was born of the Holy Spirit, it was in baptism that he was given tangible assurance that the Spirit was absolutely present with him. Jesus needs these assurances because this event marks the beginning of his ministry. It occurs just before he left for the desert and was tempted by Satan. Having God's stamp of approval made it possible to get through that difficult time and prepared Jesus for more difficult times to come. How do we see our own baptism? Many of us do not remember being baptized, but each time a child or an adult is baptized at the font in our church, we're encouraged to remember that we too have received God's blessing and promise, that we're God's children filled with the Holy Spirit. When we're able to worship in person, we walk by that font in order to enter the sacristy or the sanctuary. That placement is intentional. We remember that we enter into our relationship with God through our baptism. We have that same assurance that Jesus had so that we too are able to face temptation, move forward in ministry and endure possible suffering and death just like Jesus. When Martin Luther struggled with doubt or temptation, he said to himself over and over again, I am baptized, I am baptized. He found strength in his faith found in his baptism when God put his claim on him. The story of baptism tells us not what Jesus does, but what God does for him. God said to Jesus, you are my beloved son. In you I am well pleased. Wait a minute. As far as we know, God made this declaration to Jesus before Jesus had done anything to please or displease God. At least that's how Mark puts it. He hadn't begun his ministry yet. So we know that it's not the things we do that makes God love us. God just does. God likes us too, even if God doesn't always like what we do. Because God loves us first, we're able to respond in love to one another. 
It's Jesus' example that taught us that. As a general rule, we don't perform baptisms in private in the Lutheran Church. They occur during a worship service because we believe that baptism is an event of the community where God acts and we respond. We promise to help each other grow in our relationship with God and each other. We're reminded that we're children of God and that we are loved. During my hospital internship, I was on occasion asked to baptize babies who were in health crises. In some cases, it was a joyous occasion. Although we were covered from head to toe in hospital garb, there was much hope that this child would gain its health and go home to his, his or her family. But other times were more somber. I baptized a little girl named Elizabeth who was born too early. She just wasn't ready to be here. I held her in the palm of my hand. She was so tiny. And in the labor and delivery room at her mom's bedside with her father at my side, I touched her forehead with a small amount of water from a tiny seashell as she took her last breaths. This baptism was so important to her parents because they said it was a visible reminder that they would see her again, that she was now in God's gentle hands, and it was a little easier to let her go. These are the promises that God makes to us at our baptism. At our baptism, we receive our identity. We are children of God. And armed with this identity, we can go through hard times, like pandemics and civil unrest. We can stand firm and stand safe against anything that the world throws against us. Today, we honor the baptism of Jesus, and in doing so, we remember our own. So I invite you to remember using water to mark your forehead with the sign of the cross, because you are a child of God, sealed with the Holy Spirit, and marked with the cross of Christ forever. So I invite you to take water and mark your forehead with the cross, child of God, marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. We sing our hymn of the day, Christ, when for us we were baptized. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world and its leaders, that guided by the Holy Spirit, they proclaim the forgiveness of sin, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For wilderness and water, wind and wild beasts, and all living things on earth, that God's goodness is revealed through creation and faithful stewards who care for all God has made. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the nations of the world and their leaders, especially our nation and leaders at this time, for laborers who work both day and night and for peacemakers everywhere, that God inspire all people to use their power wisely. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. 
for the sick and those who provide medical care, for the imprisoned and those who show them mercy, for the lonely and those who provide companionship, for all who suffer, especially during the global pandemic, that God show us compassion. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For the congregation gathered here, virtually everywhere, for students returning to school, whether physically or virtually, for those seeking work, that all the beloved of God experience grace and peace. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Please take this time to offer any other prayers, either silently or aloud. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their labors, that their witness inspire us in our baptismal vocations. Hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Gathered together as God's people, we pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We give thanks at this time for the offerings that we received in the mail, online, and in person this past week. These gifts make it possible for us to continue to be the church in the world, even when we can't meet in our sanctuary. If you're worshiping with us today and would like to make a donation, please go to our website homepage and click on the online giving link. And so let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you've blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, and your son, Jesus. Use us and what we have gathered to show the world your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And so now this benediction. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. We sing our closing hymn, Baptized and Set Free. Dear friends, please be safe, go in peace, let the light of Christ shine. Thanks be to God.